This is going to be a video about sort of more advanced object drawing or advancing your object drawing. Um, this is kind of where we're going to begin in terms of intermediate drawing practice. And hopefully in beginning drawing you've done a lot of observational drawing, you're familiar with basic forms, but if you're not that's totally okay because we're going to go through it and it'll be totally fine. I'm going to show you some stuff digitally, but this stuff is completely applicable to you. Um, any media um, with pencil, pen, whatever. I don't differentiate from the use Procreate, Photoshop, whatever, that's fine. Um, I always recommend using a lot of analog materials early on because that kind of trains a little more coordination. But um, we're gonna run through it real quick. And so I'm, I'm in Photoshop because um, it's the program that I have and uh, Back to basics, there's your three basic shapes. Rectangle or square, triangle, circle, um, simple stuff. And you always want to use simple stuff um, as, as much as possible. You've also got your basic forms, right? You have your box form, which is kind of your most powerful form because you can see three sides and you can adapt it in a lot of ways. You've got your uh, pyramid form, which is a couple of triangles put together. Um, not necessarily the most common form, but good to know. Um, you've got your sphere, which is useless as a form until you light it or until you cut it apart. Then you've got your cylinder, which is highly useful, but um, you have to see one end of it or remind yourself that it's a cylinder repeatedly. Your um, cone form, also highly useful. Um, it can also be, you know, cut apart and chopped up, combined in a lot of different ways. You've also got your prismatic form, very useful for houses and architecture. Then you've got your sort of non-form form, which is your um, ribbon form, and it's uh, it's a bit funky because it's it's not really a form, it's a plane, right? It, it's got two sides, um, but it's useful. You know, I, I was never taught this in school, and I only found out about it through Will Weston recently, but, um, you know, looking back at all my old drawings, we were using the ribbon form all the time to do all kinds of things. It's just we never stu studied it, so um, it's useful to, to know um, on its own and be able to study that and isolate it and find its uses as well. So whenever you're drawing objects, um, you're going to go through a process of first analyzing its flat shape. Let's say that you have a couch and you want to draw a couch. So you go up to your couch and first you kind of, and you get, this is where sighting and measuring comes in. You can figure out, well, my couch is about, you know, so tall. And I can go over and measure and say, well, it's about a two to one ratio, right? So the height is one and the width is two. And then I know that the seat of the couch hits it about halfway. And then its arms are a little above halfway. Its cushions go down to about a quarter got its arm over here. The arms stick out and kind of break up the silhouette. And then it's a two cushion couch, so it's divided in the middle. And the cushions are rounded, so then I just start to round everything out. Rounded slightly at the bottom, and then it's got feet on either side and one in the middle. So now I've got my couch shape and when I got the couch shape I know how to convert that to form because I know how to take a a plane and put that into perspective. So then we have to make a decision, right? How are we going to present this couch? Um, when you have a box you can present the box with one side, you can present the box with a little bit of perspective and show two sides or you can take that box and present it with three sides. And whenever you show 
one side, it's obviously going to look flat. Um, two sides, you're going to be able to get a lot, of, a lot more information, but you're going to buy the most depth when you show um, three sides. Then you're going to go through um, translating this into form, and this has a sort of three-step process. The first part is you're going to decide what the main form is and how to express that. So obviously with the couch, this main form is a box form. So I can go ahead and I can draw out this box form that's going to encompass the couch. The step two that I'm going to go through in terms of translating the shape into form is I'm going to decide on subforms. And sometimes you're going to um, add forms and other times you're going to subtract. So I'm going to show you a subtractive method. So you're going to take this box form that you've done for the couch and I'm going to subtract out some subforms. So what I'm going to do is think about the space that the backing takes up and think about the space that the seat is going to take up and I'm just going to cut those out of the form. So now if I throw some emphasis on that and some heavier line weight I've got a very boxy looking uncomfortable couch that looks like a, more of a bench than a couch. And then in step three I'm going to do all of the detail forms and I know I'm showing the same breakdown every time but that's okay repetition is good boom 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 I say the word boom that's kind of like my self-talk in drawing number three detail forms And the detail form uh, or forms, those are going to be the ones that give this guy some character. So I need to go in and say, well, here's my detail form of the side cushion. And here's my detail form of the center cushion. It's going to go back in space. I'm going to do the other side cushion as well. Keep in mind that that's going to go right along. And since I've established my, my subforms as well, I'm also able to um, work in perspective really quickly and really easily. Um, then I've got my backing cushions that are curved, right? So I have to be able to curve the backing cushions. Then I can go up from where I've already decided the, decided the center is, continue those curves, draw through, keep kind of making this more organic and more curved, put the little feet on. And here I've got a pretty reasonable couch. Um, I can always do more to include like stitching and stuff like that if I'm looking at it um, in a really detailed way. And then from here I can do things to kind of establish value. If I just want to do some quick sketching and get some quick value in, what I like to do is just say, um, well, I'll just lay in the, the shadow side and um, uh, what I do is a, just a 50% gray, right? And you can do this really easily too with um, uh, any kind of like drawing software or um, you know pencil and paper. It doesn't really matter. And so what I do is I like to lasso and bucket fill stuff um, because that's kind of what you do in, in drawing anyway. You just sort of like block in big areas. So really quickly you can kind of get an idea of how light would fall on this object. Um, 
and you're gonna do this is like the same process you would use like with pencil you would just be filling it in like one bit at a time right you know you've got your cast shadow under here so this area would all be in shadow and without differentiating the tone I can get a pretty good idea of, of what this guy might actually look like um, if I were to spend some time on the lighting and I can change some of those shapes and you know, just get a value pattern worked out I don't like that shape redo it Cool. So in a couple of minutes, basically, I've done, you know, something that gives you an indication of how the lighting will work on this object, as well as like the shape and the characteristics of, of this object. And this is kind of like um, how I want you to advance in terms of your object drawing. I'll give you another example as well. Let's do another one. So here we'll do a, um, a sort of cabinet that um, that we've got around the house and what you want to do is like just kind of loosely side and measure the overall proportions you know you've got your your typical like you know sight down and use your thumb to gauge you know height and, and width by a unit um, which you should have probably done in your in your beginning drawing but if you haven't um, you can research how to do that it's pretty it's pretty common um, so this one's kind of a, a cabinet and what I'll do is um, go through the sort of creation of this. What you can do even before you measure proportions is you can do this sort of um, L-shaped thing. Um, drop a vertical, drop a horizontal, and then you can measure it out. So what I can do here is say, well, boom, this is going to be the, the top and bottom. So I've got one unit made already. And then um, the overall proportions here are roughly like kind of a two to one thing. So I can I can take my pen pencil and I can swing out um, just like a two to one kind of proportional relationship. Boom. I can measure it on I'm doing an analog measurement on the screen, which is totally ridiculous. But there you go. So I've got a two to one box basically uh, ready to go. So then I, I will probably want to divide that up again because the proportions of the way that it's subdivided and constructed are in thirds. So I have to then make another measurement and estimate kind of where the thirds are. So roughly about here, that's going to be my thirds. And if you're careful about measuring, that can save a lot of time because you're kind of creating this plan and, and plotting this out ahead of time. Um, you know, you can also just go loosely and sketch it in. It doesn't really matter whatever approach that you want to take. Then what I want to do is pay attention to how this this guy is kind of constructed, right? So it's got a top, and that top kind of sits on everything. The next major planks are the legs, and they connect up to the top, and they go all the way to the ground. And that also is going to help me construct the side. Then from there, the bottom sits off the ground a little bit. And that bottom plank is sort of wide. Then the next thing I've got is a top plank that's pretty narrow but goes right under the under the top plank that I've done inside that. So what I'm doing too here is I'm figuring out how this thing is constructed and I'm studying this. So if I'm an, an industrial designer, I'd probably want to do a bunch of these um, kind of object sketches because that would be a lot of benefit to me. The next major subdivision is the um, interior uh, subdivision. And um, I need to know the middle of this interior subdivision. So what I can do is um, I can kind of construct these, the whole subdivision. I can do an X through the center. And whenever I do this X method, I know where the center is. 
and then on either side of the center I've got a gap. And I've got three equal subdivisions that make up these little cubbies. So here I've created my little subdivisions. And then next I've got these little glass cabinet doors. And they kind of have these wider sections on the verticals. And the verticals go top to bottom completely. Then I've got horizontal sections that go like this. That makes up each of these cabinet doors. You can see through it, um, and there's a little shelf in the center. And I can use the X method center to judge where my center is. Next, um, just to give it some more detail, I've got um, hinges, right? And my hinges, the top of the hinge kind of, um, it, they're curved, oddly curved hinges, and they, they line up with the planks right here. So I can go in, I can give myself these hinges, and they're kind of dark. This is a relatively like um, light colored, kind of uh, like whitewashed wood. So I can give myself these little hinges there. And then there's another detail, which is um, it's got handles. And the handles are kind of diamond shaped and then they have these funky almost like scissor looking um, loops at the bottom. So here I'm noticing just tons and tons of little details about this. Um, and now I need to go back through and kind of like clean up and make it a little bit more distinctive, right? So, um, and make it a little more clear. So I can give some line weight into the doors because that gap in the door is going to collect a little bit of a shadow. And if I increase the line weight there, that implies that the door is one unit and that there's a little bit of a shadow inside that, right? So that's just going to help this be a little bit more understandable. And then I can go around the outer edge and I can define a little bit of the outer contour. If anything breaks up the outer contour, like if this box top went out a little bit, like I'd want to pay a lot of attention to that because that gives it a lot of a different overall shape and a lot of extra character that I didn't have before. You know, there's going to be a, a shadow under this because this kind of overhangs, so I can emphasize that line weight, right? Um, so I can do a lot of things just with the line drawing to create more character here. Um, then if I want to, I can give this bit a little bit more of a of a shadow, and there we go. I've got I've got that elevation plan of the object, and then you know if you wanted to take again your sophisticated um, elevation plan, you can take your lasso tool and start to um, just loosely um, block in some areas that are going to be in shadow. Here I can do that in all of the recessed spaces. And that's going to throw the facade of this thing forward. And you can see how this would be applicable to buildings too. Like you could use this really well for drawing and perspective and all kinds of stuff. And if you know, if you're working traditionally, which I assume you probably are, um, it doesn't matter because you know, this, this technique is the same thing. You're just going to take the time rather than bucket filling to just get the side of your pencil out and fill this in. Um, so that was kind of a garbage selection right there. So you can always just change that up. Cool. So 
there I've got my little study of the front of this object in. So then I can kind of take that and translate that into perspective. Um, if I want to, I can do a study of the side, and I may need to, right? So the um, side kind of has like a one to one and a half ratio. So I can take this exact height and I can keep it the same. And then I can say, well, that's one and a half, and then the width is going to be one. So I can just kind of double check my measurements that it's roughly one to one and a half. Draw out that box. Then I can give that some character. Got the box top. Got the legs. Legs are wider on the side than they are in the front. I've got the same height that I've just brought over, right? And then I've got wood planks that are going to kind of separate that. And I can deal with the wood plank text textures later. If I want to get really sophisticated, again, I can do lasso tool uh, and bucket fill. Um, and I can block in kind of the shadow on, on that side. Um, now all that's left is to really just translate that into perspective. So what I want to do is just say, well, um, I'm going to do a two-sided box. Um, I'll do that. Go back to my 90% gray. Um, I'm going to go one, two, one, two. So now I've got my two-sided box. So what I need to do then is translate this box over. It's always helpful to know the center, right? So if I draw that X method, I know where the center of this box is. And the center of the box is always towards the uh, receiving side, right? So that means that you know I have a big and a small side. And the difference between that is going to help me with my center. So I, then I can estimate thirds based on what I know from here. If this is the center, then these are my thirds. And I can kind of quickly go, well, I know that this third has to be kind of close to the center, and this third has to be kind of farther apart, and that each of these has to get progressively smaller by just a little bit to make it make sense. So that's pretty close um, to a convincing, like, third. So then what I need to do is start subdividing just like I did. And I run this same process down and I translate it into forms. Okay. And now I'm just going to basically just translate this flat shape on here, right? And I go, I can go in the same order and be like really formulaic with it. So I went side to side, top section, bottom section, then back to the top. Okay. Then I started thinking about the center subdivision. Say, well, here's my center subdivision. I need my middle, and I need to subdivide into thirds. such that I get roughly equal spaces. There we go. So now I've got my roughly equal spaces. I need the sides of that to make them more solid. Then I go into my doors. Go fairly wide, fairly wide, top or bottom, top, fairly wide, fairly wide, bottom, top, then I can go into hinge detail, hinge, 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 hinge detail, hinge detail, hinge, hinge, then I can go into handle, handle, There we go. Then I've got that. Then I can go onto the side and I can 
translate the top and give the top some shape. You can change this top line, break up the top line down here so that I'm now getting into more interesting forms. I can bring this wood pattern over. Then what I need to do, since I've only done kind of flat stuff, is do a few things to buy myself some um, extra dimension. And I'm going to zoom in here. So what I can do is add small details, right? You can say, well, I can go back in space right here. And I can add the back of the cabinet. I can do small details like give this door some depth. I can do a little teeny detail like that and all of a sudden this foot now has depth to it. And I do that enough times and it's all going to make sense. Then I can go in with this, um, oh wait and I forgot to add the, uh, the little platform bits here. And those of course go back in space and hit back there. Boom, boom, back in space. Hit somewhere back there. And then I can take my same simple lighting pattern and it's going to look pretty cool because um, I can take this whole side, block this whole side out, and start to um, buy myself a bunch of dimension, right? So I can take this whole side, and do a bunch of simple stuff to kind of make this all work. Boom, can cut that a little differently so it looks like there's some light getting into there. And I can give this a shadow side on the bottom of this guy. And then I go under it and give it a shadow. And then when I zoom out, it's going to look fairly convincing. Um, so even just blocking in with a single value and using sep a separation of light and dark, I get something that's, you know, r like mildly convincing. I mean, there's some stuff that we could definitely clean up with it. We could fuss with the box um, uh, a lot more and do a lot more with perspective. We could get in there and start, you know, dealing with um, uh, more, more detail, making sure that we're real accurate with everything. But for a sketch, like this is great. It's a it's um, it's a simple method. Um, it's really methodical. It's um, it's relatively easy to do. It's measured and it goes in, in small steps and stages. And you should be able to follow those small steps and stages really, really readily and really easily. So, um, you know, this is achievable by anybody. And I think that's like the strength of, of doing this sort of this sort of method is that by just following um, steps, breaking things down, drawing things multiple times, drawing things flat, practicing the forms on its own, you can create some interesting objects. And then um, 
when you do this enough times, like in terms of drawing objects that you see and that you directly observe, you're going to be able to go into your head, get a reference for something, and then create something that doesn't exist. Essentially design your own object, and that object could be um, something that you actually produce. Um, you could be um, you know, designing interiors of rooms. You could be designing um, furniture. You could be doing product design. You could be doing industrial design. You could be doing prop design for a film. You could do prop designs for 3D animation. Um, really anything with this sort of process. And um, what makes things distinctive are the way that you treat the main form, the subform, and the detail forms and how they all interact. And um, your ability to decide what those are and develop your own sort of shape language is part of the strength of what you're drawing and your style is going to become.